the first release of Elijah Craig Barrel Proof for 2024, batch A124, is available now. This is the youngest release of Elijah Craig Barrel Proof, with a 10 year and a 9 month barrel being the youngest used in the batch. A common question is how A124 stacks up against the batches from 2023, all of which boast higher age statements and proof points. That is the topic of today's video. As usual, useful timestamps can be found in the video description. First, let's talk about what we will be tasting in this blind and a bird's eye view of it. All of the whiskeys in today's blind will be Elijah Craig barrel proof releases. The mash bill or grain that is used to produce the distillate for the whiskey is 78% corn, 12% malted barley, and 10% rye. That distillate is then aged in new charred oak barrels in Kentucky for roughly 12 years, give or take a couple. Several barrels around the same age are then pooled together into a single batch before being bottled for distribution. The mash bill, along with the aging process and location, qualifies Elijah Craig Barrel Proof as a bourbon whiskey. As stated on the bottles, all of these whiskeys are non-chill filtered, uncut, and straight from the barrel. The suggested retail price of each release is between $70 and $80 for a 750 milliliter bottle, and they usually aren't too hard to find on store shelves at that price, depending on your area. Tasting notes do vary by batch, but usually include vanilla, caramel, butterscotch, oak, spice, and fruit. Now let's get into specifics. For this blind tasting, I have five nearly identical Glencairn glasses. Each has been labeled on the bottom with an opaque sticker, so the identity of each can be revealed after they have been scored and ranked. I will be assessing a roughly half ounce pour of each whiskey over the course of about 30 minutes to an hour. Rankings will be based on nose or smell, palate or taste and mouthfeel, and finish or the aftertaste and any lingering sensations. Palate plays the largest role in my ranking, followed by finish and finally the nose. In glass A is batch A123. Released in January of 2023, the youngest barrel used in A123 is 12 years old, though older barrels may have also been used, and it comes in at 125.6 proof or 62.8% alcohol by volume. Glass B contains batch B523. Released in May of 2023, the youngest barrel in B523 is 11 years and 5 months old, and it comes in at 124.2 proof or 62.1% alcohol by volume. In glass C is batch C923. Regarded as one of, if not the best Elijah Craig barrel proof release, the youngest barrel used in C923 is 13 years and 7 months old, and it comes in at a staggering 133 proof or 66.5% alcohol by volume. Also, I know the main bottle of this is empty, and that's just because I portioned it out into smaller bottles to try and keep it for longer. Next up, Glass D contains batch A124, the most recent release. The youngest barrel in A124 is a mere 10 years and 9 months old, and it comes in at 119 proof or 59.5% alcohol by volume. This makes it the lowest strength whiskey in our lineup, but not the youngest. That's because of what we have in Glass E, which is a private barrel pick of Elijah Craig Barrel Proof. This single barrel expression from Argonaut Wine and Liquor clocks in at an age of just 8 years old, but it's still fairly strong at 124 proof or 62% alcohol by volume. I included it because I was curious to see how it would compare to the more widely available batch releases of Elijah Craig Barrel Proof. Just for comparison, I've done this exact same blind tasting once before, about a week ago. At that time, my rankings were, from first to last, C923, A123, A124, the private barrel pick from Argonaut Wine and Liquor, and in last place was B523. After pouring each whiskey into their designated Glencairn, I mixed them up and did my best to not pay attention so that I lost track of which whiskey was in which glass. I then arranged them all in a Glencairn holder and assigned them a number according to their position. In the front row from left to right are glasses 1, 2, and 3. In the back row, again from left to right, are glasses 4 and 5. 
I like to give each Glencairn a nice swirl to coat the sides of the glass as this helps with picking up on subtler notes for the nose. Finally, before starting this blind, the whiskies were allowed to rest for about 10 minutes. I like to start these blinds by going through and nosing each glass, taking deep breaths of open air between each glass to refresh my sense of smell. My main notes for the nose of each glass are as follows. For glass number one, and I'll be showing the identity of these glasses at the bottom of the screen, I picked up notes of Rickhouse, Brown Sugar, Peanut Brittle, a fairly strong ethanol fragrance, and very light oak. I want to quickly add in here that I didn't give numbered scores to the noses, but I did start doing that once I got to the palette and finish portions of the blind. For glass number two, I picked up notes of stronger oak and it smells fantastic. It's very sweet with lots of depth and complexity that I find difficult to describe with words. Meanwhile, the scent of alcohol is not nearly as strong as it was with the first glass, which for me is a good thing. For glass number three, the stronger whiff of alcohol is back. I get a lighter nutty smell along with the notes of brown sugar and caramel. For glass number four, I picked up on notes of light caramel and brown sugar, but there was less of an overpowering alcohol smell when compared to glasses one and three. I still get that peanut brittle here, and overall, or at least so far, glass number two has the best nose. Finally, for glass number five, I mainly picked up notes of intense caramel and more oak than all but glass number two. There was also a fairly intense alcohol smell. After going through and double checking my initial impressions, my ranking of these five whiskies off of the nose alone are from last to first, number one, number four, number three, number five, and number two. Next, I moved on to the actual tasting. While I focus on palette here, I'll also add in thoughts on the finish of each if anything stands out in a significant way. To cleanse my palette between glasses, I have a bottle of room temperature water. Also, I generally go back and forth between all of the options until I can settle my thoughts on each. My main notes for the palette of each glass are as follows. For glass number one, it's very pleasant, sweet and light on the palate, there's brown sugar that comes through strong with subtle oak flavor. Definitely some rye spice notes and a bit of pepper and citrus if I'm not mistaken. It's a little thin, but still with enough oil and viscosity for a satisfying mouthfeel. My score on the palate for this one is 7 out of 10. For glass number 2, stronger oak is immediately present. I would be surprised if this was not C923. It's got some tartness that you might expect from black cherries, the mouthfeel is silky and viscous, and it coats the mouth extremely well. My score for the palette on glass number 2 is an exceptional 9 out of 10. For glass number 3, it was similar to glass number 1, but there was a little more bitterness on the palette and even on the finish. Fortunately, that bitterness does not linger for long. The mouthfeel is alright, but nothing crazy. Overall, 6.5 out of 10. For glass number 4, it was pleasant enough. There was no bitterness on the palate, however, there was not much oak. It was mostly brown sugar, caramel, and peanut brittle. It wasn't super viscous, at least in relative terms, but it still coated the mouth well enough. Overall, 7 out of 10. And finally, for glass number 5, there's more rye spice on the tongue. There's a little bit of bitterness, though not as severe as with glass number 3. It's got a nice oakiness that carries throughout the sip. It's got good viscosity and coats the palate well. Overall, 8 out of 10. My ranking of these five whiskies off of the palate alone are from last to first, number three, number one, number four, number five, and number two. Last but not least, I go through each glass again and focus on the finish. My main notes on the finish for each glass are as follows. For glass number one, it's a bit astringent, but not bitter. It leaves a sweet and warm aftertaste that lingers, and I'm giving it a 7 out of 10. For glass number two, everything about it is so good, at least for me. The finish is a pleasant mash of brown sugar, caramel, and rich deep oak. It leaves you wanting more, and in addition, there is no bitterness to mar the experience. Once again, 9 out of 10. For glass number three, fine notes of oak are overshadowed and brought down by an overtone of bitterness that I just don't find enjoyable. 
It's still fairly good, but not nearly as good as it would be were it not for this imperfection. Overall, a 6 out of 10. For glass number 4, there is a good amount of rye spice on the finish, like caramel and perhaps even honey with a bit of vanilla. There's no bitterness at all, and it's a very easy sip to enjoy and have more of, but nothing that really stands out as extraordinary. Overall, 7.5 out of 10. And finally, for glass number 5, paying attention to the finish, I'm wondering if this might not be batch C923. It's also very good. Once again, I get powerful oak and a rich sweetness to both the palate and finish. There is a ghost of bitterness, but for me it's subtle enough that it adds to the experience rather than taking away from it. I ended up going back to glass number 2 just to make sure it had the better finish, which it did. That being said, glass number 5 still sits at a respectable 8.5 out of 10 in terms of finish. My ranking of these 5 whiskies off of the finish alone are from last to first, number 3, number 1, number 4, number 5, and in first, number 2. And now for the overall rankings and reveal. In last place was glass number 3. This was whiskey B, or batch B523. While it does have a pretty good nose, I personally found that both the palate and finish were overshadowed by a bitterness that I personally did not care for. In fourth place was glass number one. This was Whiskey E or the Private Barrel from Argonaut. It ranked in last place on the nose, likely due to its younger age. In addition to that, it makes sense that I might mistake it for the youngest of the wider released batches, A124. However, it carries little bitterness and is both easy and enjoyable to drink, if somewhat on the more straightforward and thin side. In third place was glass number 4. This was Whiskey D or the newly released batch A124. As previously mentioned, I did not get much oak on the palate of this whiskey, and it ranked fairly low on the nose, only doing better than the private barrel. That being said, the combination of rye spices, vanilla, and caramel along with a lack of any bitterness makes for a very pleasant drinking experience. In second place was glass number 5. This was whiskey A or batch A123, and that means by process of elimination, first place goes to glass C, which was batch C923. This outcome does not surprise me too much. Taking more detailed notes, I find that batch A123 has a lot of the tasting notes that make batch C923 stand out. It's got a rich oakiness and even some tart cherry to boot. However, it also carries the slight imperfection of bitterness that is more akin to batch B523. Because of this, it doesn't reach the heights of batch C923 in my opinion, which does everything that batch A123 does, but even better and without even the slightest hint of bitterness, along with a noticeably superior mouthfeel. Now, my final thoughts here is that all of these are very good. If you like rich, full-bodied bourbons that have some nice age and strength behind them, along with a viscous mouthfeel, you will almost certainly enjoy any of these. The A124 batch is a bit less oak and a bit more spice and nuttiness, but it's definitely worth $80 or less, at least in my admittedly unprofessional opinion. I will fully admit that I am not an expert whiskey taster. That being said, up to this point I have tasted about 65 different whiskies and have definitely developed a sense for what I enjoy in a good whiskey, especially bourbon. Regardless of the batch, Elijah Craig Barrel Proof has never failed to deliver on those aspects. It's just that some batches do the job better than others. In the case of C923, it is notably better. And in the case of this most recent release, Batch A124, it's fairly middle of the road and lighter on the oak notes. If you want to share your thoughts and opinions, you can do so in the comments. If you want to see more great content, you can head over to my channel. And if you're new, consider subscribing. Both me and my cat Marshmallow greatly appreciate it. Have a great day. If you're here today, have a great Wednesday. Please drink responsibly, and as always, thanks for watching.